OK. Let's do a quick example. Somebody's standing. On top of a building at 12 meters, he throws a stone upwards, vertically upwards, and the initial velocity is 30 meters per second. The acceleration is due to gravity. Is the, let's take it as minus 10 meters per second squared. Okay. So we want to find the distance as a function of time. The vertical distance. Well, to find the distance, as we just learned, we need velocity. But here the velocity is changing. We know the initial velocity, but there's acceleration. What will happen? This storm will decelerate, will go slower and slower, will reach a maximum, and then start to accelerate back downwards. So the velocity changes all the time. Okay? So first I must find V of T. Well, the acceleration I know is the derivative of velocity. So the velocity at time t is the velocity at time 0 plus the integral of acceleration from 0 to t. Is this clear? Okay. We find the velocity at time t from the initial velocity just by adding it the little steps in velocity at each moment and those steps are different from moment to moment because in each case it's the present acceleration times delta t okay and to make it exact gives me the integral okay so let's do it now so I have v of t now I know v of 0. What is v of 0? 30. So I put 30 here. Plus, what is a of t? It's minus 10. And it's, it doesn't even depend on t at all. It's a constant. Now minus 10 is the derivative of what? Right. So V of T equals 30 minus 10 T. And in general, if I have here T1 and T2, I have to evaluate this function at T2 and then subtract at T1. So this I denote. <coughs> like this okay just notation does anybody remember this notation I write it in a moment it's just in this case tan t at, at some t is just tan t at t equals 0 tan times 0 is 0 so the result is nothing but 30 minus tan t Okay. This is what that little bar means. Remember in the last lecture, if we had an example, see 
t to the n and then the value of the integral was c t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 so you figure out what the formula is and then you put in the number t2 minus the number t1 okay short for that is just put a line and t in this case t2 is t and t1 is 0 okay yes anybody have questions about this notation all right so now our V of t is 30 minus 10t. Now I want the height z of t. This is z at 0 plus from 0 to t of the velocity. So I put here whatever function the velocity is in the present example is 30 minus 10 t and I have to integrate it. Okay? Well, this gives me z of t equals 12 because z of 0 was 12. You have to know that, you know, where the motion started. Okay? Plus, what is the integral of 30? 30t. Why? Because if you take the derivative of 30t, you get 30. Okay? And what's the integral of minus 10t? Does everybody understand why this is minus 5t squared? Okay? Well, in this case, the zero is not important because all the terms are zero anyway. That's not always the case, but in this case it is true. Okay, so we have the final result. Z of t is 12 plus 30t minus 5t squared. Okay. Now you will do more examples in your problem hours this week. All of your homework. as you know, is from just examples of derivatives and integrals, okay? So that's your task, even if you know it well, just to remember how to do these things, okay? Okay, this is the end of this chapter, chapter 6 in the draft book. We have finished it. It talks about how to find out where the particle is, which is what we just learned, integration, okay? Now I'll start a new topic. Circular motion. Now we will later study many examples in which things are moving in a circle. It's a simple kind of motion, but it's important. It does occur in nature. For example, the orbit of the moon around the Earth is almost a circle. It's a bit of an ellipse. The orbit of the Earth around the sun is an ellipse, but it's very close to a circle. Okay? In engineering, many systems, engines, rotary engines, are based on circular motion. So it's important. And we'll learn about circular motion, but we'll first start by describing how, just describing circular motion. Okay? And then we will use circular motion as an example, to learn about sine, cosine, important functions, and how to take their derivatives. So this chapter is important. It is simple, but it's important. 
both for our science aims and also because you will remember or you will learn about sine and cosine and we will see how to take the derivatives of sine and cosine and then we will use that all the time okay so let's start Here is a circular track and some object. I call this my y axis. This is my x axis. <coughs> and here is my little object. It's moving along the circle. And its position, of course, is a vector. I call this vector R of T because the position changes as time goes on. Okay? And I call this angle here. Theta. This Greek letter is called theta. And by convention almost all the time this angle is measured from the x-axis in the counterclockwise direction okay clockwise counterclockwise the other way for you okay now the object is moving along this circle it has already moved if it started Here, here, it has already moved a distance, a certain distance that I'll call S. Okay? The object is stuck on the circle, it's moving along the circle. So the distance is just the length of arc along the circle, yay uzunluğu, length of arc, okay? Now you see, as the object moves, as theta becomes larger, this length will also increase. In fact, you can see that the length of arc is proportional to S is proportional to theta. Okay, as the object moves along, theta increases, and the distance it travels on the circle increases in direct proportion to theta. Is this clear? Now, if my object is moving on this circle, it will move a certain distance for theta equals 30 degrees, okay, so much. If it is moving in a larger circle, for the same theta, it will move a longer distance. So the distance gun is also proportional to the size of the circle. How much is the distance gun? Well, it depends on the units of R, S, and theta. Okay, so there is some constant in front, and the value of the constant depends on your definition of the units. Okay? Constant times R times theta. This is absolutely clear to everyone. Now, yes or no? Any questions? Okay, I'm asking you a question. Do you understand what I just said? 
Yes or no? Okay, I'm saying the following. If an object moves along a circle, the distance it goes is proportional to the angle. The angle of the angle. No, 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 no. Of course, the distance it goes. It starts from here. It comes up to here. So it goes a distance, and at the same time, its angle has changed. The change in the angle and the distance come are proportional to each other. But if this object is moving in a bigger circle, for the same angle, it will go a larger distance. So the distance can is also proportional to the size of the circle. So I put there the radius of the circle. Proportional means there's also a constant in front, and the constant depends on the units you use. OK? Clear? This constant depends on units. For example, if theta is in degrees, let's find the constant. 